So I'm curious, what are some key communication skills that every business owner should master? Surprisingly, one of the most important aspects of effective communication and, and speaking is better listening skills. Hmm. It, it's listening to your listeners, observing your listeners. And, and in fact, I've got a great example of this from a, a recent guest on my podcast who was, who used to be a magician, magician performer. Okay. And he pointed out, he said that when you're a magician, you have to adapt your tricks, your performance to what the audience, how they are reacting. And so you may cut something short, you might decide to work, you know, pull a volunteer from the audience, but you need to be able to change on the fly. Hmm. And too many people are locked into a pitch that that this is all they know and they just give the pitch without thinking of the consequences. Now I'm curious because I mean it totally makes sense. I think correct me correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of times it sounds like there's an intuition there. You're you're able to pick up on the body language and the reactions and the energy in the room. Is that something that you feel can be taught or is that something that some people just more intuitively have? Interesting that you put it that way. Uh, the short answer is yes, it can be taught and yes, intuition can be enhanced mm. by okay. becoming more aware of your intuition and by asking yourself, "What? okay, my intuition is telling me this. Why is that? What, what is the evidence that's triggering? Because something is triggering your intuition and your intuition is processed in your subconscious. Yeah. So your subconscious is picking up on signals that your conscious isn't picking up on so you when your intuition is telling you start thinking oh wait a minute my intu intuition is far more far more able to pick up on things far more sensitive than my conscious mind because our conscious mind is is you know focused in a certain line but the but their subconscious is picking up a lot more and so part of it is yes training yourself to uh, to be more in touch with your subconscious mind. I want to set this framework up for everyone listening because I think as we're just starting this conversation, I'm thinking of so many different things this can be applied to because some people might listen to this right away and think, okay, well, I'm not a public speaker, uh, but it can even be for the content creators, the people that are putting messages on their social media and the graphics and the videos that they're putting up for their company. And how do they effectively communicate through those mediums as well? And you got it. Yes, it, it's not just speaking. It's however we send our messages and we need to reach the audience. And, and first we need we need to first we need to grab their attention and then and then we need to build trust rapidly. And mm. then they need to see that there's something in it for them. So I hope I'm not jumping around too much, but I am curious when we talk about this, you know, when we're talking about a live audience versus maybe social media content and how we communicate differently between those, when we're with a live audience, you have, um, you have a faster feedback loop. You can read the body language. You can, you can hear the responses. You can see the responses, but on social media, how, like, how do you differentiate the two or how do you make sure you're communicating properly through that medium. Mm. Um, a, a good, a good uh, um, observation of the differences. Yes, the best converse, conversation is always when you're in the room with the person, when you can pick up on their body language, their tone, their attention, all, all these signals that we get. That when you're posting on social media, you don't get that. And unfortunately, what you tend to get, what we tend to get on social media, is the extremes. Yeah. And that is not necessarily an indicator of the audience you're trying to reach. So when you're posting on social media, think about who you most want to reach. Who is the person? What's the, what, what do they like? What are they interested in? What problems might they have that you can solve? And how do you believe they will react to you? So direct your messages to those people 
and ignore the extremes. So here, here's, a, here's a tip I tell people when you are speaking to an audience in the room. The numbers aren't scientific, it's more the concept. Okay. So if you've got a room full of people, 10% of the people love you no matter what you do. You can do no wrong. They, they think you walk on water. 10% mm -hmm. of the people hate you. They can't stand you. doesn't matter. They, they don't like the way you look, the way you dress, the way you sound, whatever. You remind them of an old uh, uh, ex, ex or a former teacher or something. You yeah. can't reach them. So that 10% and that 10%, forget about them. You're not going to change their mind. So work on the 80% that you can possibly move and forget about those extremes. Yeah, because if you get caught up trying to handle the extremes, you end up losing your message for the, the core audience. Yes, and I've seen it happen. And, and when I started in the speaking business, I wrongly believed that I, I was supposed to please everyone in the audience. And that's a big mistake. You cannot please everyone. Uh, in fact, if you need to know, you need to be willing to have some people who can't stand you. And the reason is because their personality is just radically different from you, and that's okay. See, if you are totally bland, mm -hmm. then then you don't appeal to anyone, and you don't you don't you don't repel anyone. When you really you, and a strong you, whatever your character is, there are people you attract, and there are people you repel. That's life.